Hello and welcome to CGB Games, Cameron here. And today we have another devlog for the game I'm solo making called Groundskeeping, a first person multiplayer hotel maintenance horror game. The first thing we're working on today is the weather system we started last time, and more specifically the rain Niagara effect that will populate our sky. I decided to make three different versions of the rain that can randomly spawn, one for light, medium and heavy variants. Originally I wanted the particles to have collision and spawn a splash when they hit the ground to make the effect more intriguing, but I quickly realised this was way too expensive and dropped the FPS down significantly. Instead I just made the rain particles have a shorter lifetime so they would despawn before they hit the ground. In the end I decided to give the map a 20% chance to spawn rain at four different parts of the day. The next task I want to do is a simple quality of life one. Whenever the player is in a menu, I want the escape button to take them back to the previous menu. This wasn't hard to do and I basically just had to go through each and every widget and add this new feature. So now we can turn the rain and I want to add three different sound files for the three different versions of the rain. I made sure the sound files were quite long and repeated properly. I also added a timeline that would slowly increase and decrease the volume of the rain whenever it spawned so it wasn't as jarring. Now that we actually have some weather added, I can continue working on the garage. The right hand wall is the last one we need to add, so I'll begin by creating it in Blender. I can also reuse all the materials we had last time, and the whole process is rather quick. With the interior walls of the garage all laid out, we can now add some wind to our weather effect to accompany our rain. Luckily for me, wind is completely invisible, so I only had to worry about the audio aspect of this task. Similar to the rain, I created three variants and got the audio to smoothly increase and decrease whenever it was spawned. I also spent some time here making sure that the wind and rain variants could spawn at the same time if they needed to and also that they would work over server, server and client. This is so everybody could experience the exact same rain variant or weather variant uh, at the same time. As we can see here, it all seems to be working well. Uh, for the purpose of this test, I also sped up the day-night cycle, so I didn't have to wait for like 8 minutes for them to spawn. Because all the interior walls of the garage are completed now, we can return our attention to the exterior walls. This took a little longer uh, than the others, as I had to make sure it all lined up perfectly and no light could seep through from the outside. I also had to make space for the crawl space, um, as that would be included for the monster later down the line. The brick texture I have was used once again to bring this to life, and now it can live happily in the scene. I also quickly modelled the ceiling of the garage as I completely forgot that that was something that needed to be made. Well it seems like I've had too much fun this episode, so I can start with the gruelling tasks of giving the player more options to optimise with. The first one I wanted to add was the screen quality option, which basically affects the screen uh, space percentage of the entire application. Uh, this is a rather big thing for the user to change, but it's great for lowering FPS really quickly, so I've included it as I want all PC specs to be able to play. With the three options for the screen quality added, I now want to give the options to optimise Lumen Global Illumination. When profiling my game thus far, it's clear that most of the budget is used on lighting, uh, so this will be an obvious thing to allow the player to edit. Once again, I gave the player three options to choose from and made sure all the variables were saved upon exiting. With all that done and working, we are once again turning our attention to the weather. I really love the idea of thunder and lightning, uh, having a slim chance to randomly spawn and spook the players, so that's exactly what we'll add. Firstly I sourced the audio for it, and then I added lights to the scene. And finally I created a blueprint that synced the point lights flashing right before the sound of thunder played. Once again I tested it in a sped up manner, and I am happy with how the whole system is coming together. There are still a few things I'd like to improve with the lightning, but for now I kind of have to move on to other tasks, one of which is stars in the night sky. 
Once again, these all have a randomness to them, uh, with some knights being more star-filled than others. To start this off, I had to build the mesh that the Niagara system would uh, use as the, as the world's space positions for the particles to spawn on. Then I began on the actual Niagara system, which was very simple to make. Each star was a simple particle that had a slight emissive glow to it so they would show up in the black sky. I also added a fade in and out for them so they wouldn't just blink into existence. Well, that about does it for today's devlog. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with the continuation of this game. And you can also get my previous game on Steam now, which will be linked at the end of this video. Uh, thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you all next time.